Recreational cannabis, now legal across the country, but with some varying rules in different locations. Canadians are questioning how new regulations will affect them. And that's where we begin with our panel as we go behind the headlines. Richard Krauss, film critic and host of Pop Life, and social media personality Stuart Reynolds are with me here in studio. Samantha Kemp Jackson is a parent blogger, and she joins us now from downtown Toronto. So, Sam, let me start with you, parent blogger, <laughs> parent, adult, and from all of those standpoints, what, what are your thoughts on this day? Well, I think, you know, it's quite historic because apparently we're only the second country other than Uruguay mm. uh, to, to institute this policy uh, nationally. So um, it's quite momentous to many people. I don't particularly partake, but I know many people who do. Uh, and I think it's a long time coming. Uh, you know, I do agree that it should have been uh, made um, legal. Um, how we talk to our kids, though, that's something that I'm grappling with. I don't think really we need to change the discussions that we've been having other than the fact that, you know, you're still going to talk to your kids about being safe, about how they, they use certain products, uh, you know, who they get into a car with, that type of thing. So I don't see that really changing. It's, it's not dissimilar to the discussions I've had with my kids about alcohol. So I'll talk to them similarly about cannabis. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because for some people... It, this is much ado about nothing. It really, and for others, it's me. a slippery slope. Mm. What about the generational divide? Well, I think there probably is a generational divide on this. I mean, if you are in and around my age somewhere, you've known people your entire life sure. who have been smoking <laughs> dope. Yeah. Now it's legal, and I do think that it's kind of interesting and fun uh, that you know, in Ontario, thirty-six thousand people used the website last night alone after midnight. Like so, starting at midnight and one second, they started hammering away at this thing. And I heard at least one story, and I'm sure that there's others, of people who bought pot, and when it comes, they're going to frame it and yes. hang it on the wall as right. the first legal pot, you know, bought in this country. On the yeah, wall. it is history on the wall. You know, um, I was looking at some magazines earlier from 1969 talking about what to do about pot. How, should, will it ever be legal in this country? And that's when this is a debate that's gone on for a very long time. And today it's happening. Now, I think it's messy, slightly chaotic mm. in the way that it's been uh, laid out. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an idea whose time has come, I think. I think they're a little gram of that like on the wall it's like it's kind of ugly well just because of you know well, it depends on what you buy i suppose yeah, yeah. yeah. a little hammer beside it to break glass oh, yeah, there you go. in yeah. case of emergency, in case of emergency <laughs> tap here let me go into your world and then just mm. in terms of you know social media and and the circles in in which what has people's reaction been in not all of my friends are stoners okay no. <laughs> you know that uh no i think it's interesting because i think as you know as richard mentioned that uh you know there's there's people who just won't be partaking anyway. Mm. Um, there's a study recently that said that like 71% of people, it wouldn't affect their decision either. However, I do think it is, it's good they've made it legal because it was kind of silly for so long. Anyone who wanted it could get it. So why are we, you know, making this a, a big crime? Um, so I, I, you know, it's, it, it is messy. I don't like the smoking aspect because Right. Why? Why, yeah, Why are we smoking stuff still? It's interesting because, as we know, there's different um, different rules across different jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. There's um, a city just north of Toronto that says, nope, not at all. You mm -hmm. can't well, smoke outside. And, and, and much like there are for cigarettes and for alcohol sure. and for, mm -hmm. you know, for everything, all these kind of, you know, sin taxed items that that the government sells there are you know different rules that vary from from province to province i you know i i do get that but you know people today are talking about how you know it's going to be wild in the streets people have never smoked dope before are going <laughs> to yeah. go out and stuff and and i just don't think that's happened i haven't smoked a joint in 35 years mm -hmm. probably i don't know since i was a kid and uh, and i have no intention well, i hope you weren't a kid up. but yeah. well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no moving on now, let me ask you sam because that that is a concern for a lot of people is it's just smoke, whether it's from, you know, cigarettes mm. or from, you know, cannabis, marijuana in, I don't know, you're taking your child or your dog for a walk in a park. Yeah, you know, well, I kind of think that it should be kind of along the lines of how we treat cigarette smoke. So the same places where you can or cannot smoke cigarettes should be the same places where you can or cannot smoke weed or cannabis or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think that it we are going to have to reconfigure how we feel about uh, the smell of, of that type of smoke because it's different from cigarette smoke. And some people like the smell. Sometimes I like the smell, but I don't want to smell it all the time. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be walking behind someone who's smoking a joint you know, and, and inhaling it with my kids, that type of thing. So we're going to have to talk about that But I do think, though, that there, there's a difference between just standing outside and smoking a joint versus smoking a cigarette in the same way that we don't let people stand on the street and drink a tumbler full of scotch. Sure. You know, 
something that that impairs judgment. But if you're judgment, drinking a tumbler full of scotch 10 feet away from me, it's not affecting me, but that smoke does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. But let me ask you this, because art imitates life, imitates art, mm. and in, so in <clears> that world, um, whether it's television, film, or whatever, in terms of representation, do you think that this legalization here will change the portrayal that we've seen for decades, I'm thinking, you know, Cheech and Chong, right. and the, you know, everybody was a stoner if they did it, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's changed a little bit already. I do think that uh, marijuana is treated very casually in films. When you do see someone smoking a joint, it's not as though it is the there end you of go. the world. Yeah, <laughs> it, the, the, this is now kind of like, you know, a, a long distant memory from our right. past, I think. Right, decades that, ago. That, yeah, you know, up in smoke, it's where my money goes, in my <laughs> lungs and sometimes up my nose. Oh, and I he remember knows the, the lyrics to the song. Of course. But, uh, but, you know, I think that it has changed. I think that marijuana use is treated very casually in movies, and and the the sort of real hardcore like drug stereotypes are reserved for harder drugs. And even though there's such a level of awareness among you know probably under thirty and, mm -hmm. and whatnot, um, still needs to have the question for people that you know have younger children, fourteen, mm -hmm. fifteen. Sure, it's just like alcohol. It's like anything like that. Any sort of drug where you're going to be relinquishing control of yourself. So is it safe that you're, what you're consuming? <clears throat> is it safe where you're consuming mm -hmm. it? All that kind of stuff. And I do want to clarify, when you guys cut away to Cheech and Chong, that yeah. was actually Cheech and Chong, not me and Richard. No, no, no. Oh, well, I guess it, 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 you couldn't yeah. tell because no, of exactly. the bandana. <laughs> and, then, oh, you and then I sang the song. I know, and it exactly. was like, you know. Yeah. Dave's not here, man. Sam, <laughs> Sam, help me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just think it's really interesting that Richard actually knows verbatim the words. I think that says everything we need to know. And in the 1970s, but... Cheech and Chong were, were, were everywhere. You had the records. Yeah. And, and it's very funny yeah. how you know they came out of the counterculture and into the the most mainstream right. of theaters and things as stoners and but mm -hmm. they were caricatures people looked at them and said oh look at the the the, the wild hippies smoking dope you didn't probably know that many people like them but they Good were enough. an exaggerated cartoon mm -hmm. version of what that lifestyle was like we're gonna have to call it there Stuart Richard <laughs> Sam as always thank you so much thank you thank you